Appreciate it. Um, in case you wonder, we're tied in together to many places uh, besides Frederick, Maryland, also to another four places at least in Michigan, um, Kalkaska, Detroit, Flint, Muskegon. We have uh, folks listening uh, tied in in Russia, in Uganda, and a host of other people tied in by telephone. So uh, we have a we have a large crowd uh, joining with us today, and so uh, we're we're glad you all could come and be here with us as well. I tried to prepare. I brought a handkerchief for sweating and a handkerchief for crying. So we'll see which one I use more as we as we go along. I do want to thank you uh, for coming. I get the uh, pleasure of thanking you in behalf of uh, Lindsay's family uh, for being here and they do appreciate it. Um, we all have something in common. We all loved Lindsay Satterfield. We um, we all knew her in our own ways, or perhaps we know more of those who love Lindsay Satterfield. So maybe the family, uh, maybe you work with others or association with others in the congregation, and you've shown your support by coming here today for that as well. And we, we do really appreciate that. Um, Lindsay's uh, parents, Greg and Christina, her siblings, uh, Caitlin, as well, um, and Ryan, they, they want you to know how much they would like to express their appreciation for the support, the expressions of love that have been flooding over them, as they describe it, after the loss of Lindsay. It's such a faith-strengthening thing to see Jehovah's love expressed through the actions of those who serve him. So many of you uh, have played a part in that up to this point. During Lindsay's illness, so many of you have given physical, emotional, spiritual, even financial support along the way to help her beat this terrible illness. So, and on so many levels, you've given support to her. And I know from our own association with uh, uh, Lindsay, she told us many, many things about the kindness that was expressed to her. They even uh, mentioned the doctors, nurses, health professionals, and aides that have provided such excellent care for Lindsay are so very much appreciated for their kindness, their skill, and all they've done for Lindsay as well. So for everyone, your loving care, your support, your concern have been a reflection of Jehovah and his love. And that's the way the family views that. So uh, I wanted to give you that that expression first from them because uh, that is really part of what you, the reason you have come the same reason we've come uh, but that's not all we have in common we also shared experiences with uh, Lindsay and so that brings us together as well so in some ways since the time even when she was sick but especially since uh, November 6th when she fell asleep in death uh, we have been memorializing Lindsay we find more and more people oh I worked with her this is where I worked with her always oh, in the congregation with her or I used to be in the congregation with her or I worked with her at Warwick or Tuxedo or even in RBC uh, things that uh, Lindsay had done things that she loved so it may be it's a shared experience maybe it's a something that uh, Lindsay said that affected you personally or maybe it's uh, something that affected your whole family by the example of Lindsay. So those are good things. So really what's happened is we've, we've all begun to, uh, to do that for some time. Now, the scriptures, of course, played a very big role in Lindsay's life. And we're going to talk about some scriptures together. We're going to talk some about some experiences as well that uh, she's had. And uh, you'll be able to add them to your list of... Uh, of where they fit in your in your life with uh, Lindsay and experiences you've had so I think uh, for all of us uh, watching some of the pictures maybe gives you a little idea of uh, uh, Lindsay growing up we'll talk about that a little bit too as we go along 
let's let's look at a scripture that uh, is familiar to us being read at uh, at a memorial service like this where we talk about someone who who has died and in Ecclesiastes the seventh chapter verse 2 it makes this comment which seems very contradictory to how we're feeling today it says in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 2 better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting for that is the end of every man and the living should take it to heart we think to ourselves um, I wouldn't have wanted to spend this Saturday afternoon here if it was my choice I wouldn't Lindsay wouldn't have wanted this to be going on either but we think about it we're here we're here today because we lost someone tragically way too young um, and and that is of course what we think about initially we come to the house of mourning to talk about the loss that we all experience by this and the fact that we know as as Christians we know that in our imperfect state this won't be the last time we go to a memorial service somewhere so it is good for us to think about that in a, in a sense it's a fulfillment of Ecclesiastes the ninth chapter and verse 11 where here the Bible records for us I have seen something further under the Sun in 9-11 that the swift do not always win the race, nor do the mighty win the battle, nor do the wise always have the food, nor do the intellectual or the intelligent always have the riches, nor do those with knowledge always have success, because time and unexpected events overtake them all. So as you know, as well as Lindsay and her family know, knew, uh, she was going along. She had a lot of things she was trying to get done, a lot of things she was involved in, in life as we all are but an unexpected event happened and she got cancer and from that point her battle changed right her battle now became for life and she was to live now to be able to stay alive and she worked hard at it she was very determined uh, and she became I would call an expert because she read and read and she compared notes and she asked others and she she made it her business. She made it her work to, to find that out. Now, at the same time, she balanced that with her life and other things that were important to her. Her ministry, her return visits, her Bible studies. Even when she was very sick, one of the things that made uh, Lindsay very happy was that she had been able to reconnect with several of her return visits that she had not been able to talk to for some time and actually have a conversation be able to share some scriptural thoughts with them again now that's a young woman who had a lot that she wanted to do so of course she wanted to stay alive of course she wanted to uh, to still be doing that work so she worked hard to stay alive uh, Ecclesiastes just turned back a page to the eighth chapter and in verse 8 <coughs> It says, just as no man has power over the spirit or can restrain the spirit, so no one has power over the day of death. And so on November 6th, Lindsay fell asleep in death. And it was a battle to the end. But when we're talking about somebody, we're talking about all that she's gone through, we're talking about that fight to the end too. That's part of what made her and inspired us by watching and listening to her and and when you would go to see her, she, what did she always have? She always had a smile. She always had a smile for you. In fact, if, even in the last day before her death in the hospital, uh, it was amazing how many times she mustered that smile for somebody that walked into the room and said something to her. And she would look up and smile, even if it was difficult to talk. So uh, that tells you something about the person and that's why one last scripture Ecclesiastes the seventh chapter go back and verse one because it sort of brings it full circle for us in verse one of seven chapter says a good name is better than good oil the day of death is better than the day of birth <coughs> Lindsay made a good name with Jehovah she had a good name when we say Lindsay Satterfield all kinds of things rush through our head um, besides the sorrow 
besides losing somebody. It, she was truly uh, a young woman of faith. And we can say that about her because her actions prove that. And it didn't happen by accident. Most of you uh, here uh, have the uh, little program that they, that they gave. It tells a little bit about her. But for the, but for the uh, sake of those who are also tied in, it does give us some basic information that ties very closely into uh, Lindsay's past, but also what made Lindsay the way she is today. And of course, she was born November 29, 1983, in West Virginia. She was the uh, first child, Greg and Christina. And uh, of course, she also had an early life as far as uh, theocratic events. As you see from here, the way home from the hospital, it was stop, go to the meeting, and then go home. Um, that probably is a good way for us to think about Lindsay, because her life revolved very much around her theocratic activity. Uh, she did not separate the two. She, didn't, uh, she wasn't looking for just uh, something else to do, some adventure to go on, but she really wanted to make her time count and be useful to Jehovah. So it was not by accident that uh, it says in that she gave her first student talk when she was eight years old that she got baptized in 1993 um did i get that right 1997 excuse me at 13. so she was a young person who already had some goals but then it was introduction to the russian language field First with a group in Detroit, and then, of course, later on here in New York City, the New York uh, area. And finally, settling here in uh, New Rochelle, in the congregation she has loved being a part of. But she enjoyed the whole experience with uh, the Russian field, and we remember that because um, uh, we experienced that as far as watching her take that on. Yeah, she was nervous. She was... Uh, afraid she couldn't do it, she wasn't going to be as good as everybody else, she wasn't going to get the language down just right, she would compare with what others were doing, but she just stayed focused, she just uh, kept going, kept trying to do it. It was proof that uh, you gave her a good start, that you uh, filled her time with uh, scriptural, spiritual things. She was active and she liked that activity. Um, so in Ephesians 6, 4, where it says, go on bringing them up, your children up, it's really you are bringing her up in the discipline and admonition of Jehovah. And that's why the results were the same. That's why you got what you got in, in Lindsay. She had a good foundation. In fact, um, I have permission to quote a piece of a letter that um, Christina wrote to Lindsay before she a short time before she died but she wanted her to know about her from a very young age uh, she said uh, I started reading the Bible story book to you right from birth by the time you were three you knew every Bible character in the book you could finish almost every sentence I as I was reading it to you you have always loved the Bible loved Jehovah and it began very early what a nice sentiment so that's your actions, your activity. That's a precious memory to you. We appreciate you sharing that because that gives us a little bit of why Lindsay was the way she was. And that, that tells us something about her as well. Of course, there's other things you say. We'll, we're going to share a little bit of it uh, a little later. But uh, I think that's just, it's good for us to think about that as far as someone who's had uh, faithful service. Now, uh, Lindsay was always interested in doing more. I remember when she told us she was going to work temporarily in Tuxedo, where they're working on, they were helping with the work towards the uh, New World Headquarters. And she was so excited. First time I saw her in the dining room when I was up there, I was just surprised. She didn't tell me. She was up there already. So it surprised me to see her there, her smile. You couldn't miss it. So that was great. And then, of course, uh, she got to work in the Montgomery Warehouse and prefab. So for her, 31 years of life when she is 18 
19 years of uh, dedicated service to Jehovah, she accomplished quite a bit. She did a lot. She was well on her way. When she was contemplating moving to New York in the first place, I remember her uh, talking to Michelle and I, and she said she was nervous. And you could see that she was. But those eyes, they betrayed something about Lindsay. She gave you the look of, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> so if I'm afraid or not, doesn't matter. And it was so interesting to me because we saw that look over and over again with her. Even when she was sick and she was talking about, should I do this? Should I do that? And she knew she, there were decisions she had to make herself. Some of them she had to just, and she would say, I'm, I'm afraid. Don't know what to do. But then she'd get that look. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to, I'm going to work at this. And she did. She put everything into it. That same determination showed up in so many other ways. The first time she came to stay with us uh, in New York when she was still, um, I called it experimenting with the Russian field in, in Detroit, but uh, she wouldn't have liked that. Because <laughs> she was pretty determined she was going to make it. Um, but I remember coming there, she would bring people with her because she was afraid to travel by herself. She wanted somebody else with her, and her sister came. Caitlin with her a couple of times and we had others uh, from the area there in Michigan that came and I remember the very first time she came and the car got towed in New York City I thought she'd never come back again <laughs> but she did she did not let that stop her and that is exactly what Lindsay is like so when we think of things for just a moment I'd like you to go to take as one older brother in Bethel called it the walk of faith in Hebrews 11 and when we think about Hebrews 11 oftentimes we talk about uh, these men of great faith that uh, were able to take action based upon that but in these cases when we look at this um, we may go to what would be the first woman that's named uh, verse 11 Sarah but it mentions here Sarah receiving power to conceive offspring even when she was past the age she was faithful, verse 11. But think about this. Think of the other part of Sarah's life. In verse 8, it talks about Abraham when he was called, that he, was, uh, that he left the place where he was to go receive an inheritance. You think Sarah wasn't part of that? She was part of that. She had to do the same thing. She had to uproot. She had to go somewhere. Uh, she faithfully did it. She was willing to do that. Why? Well, She's following her husband's lead, but she, she was a worshiper of Jehovah too. She was a person of faith. And I think of that because I think of her, of Lindsay, giving up a place that's familiar. I'm going to go somewhere where it's, it's not going to be my comfort zone. And sometimes she would tell us, I'm not sure if this is going to work out. And she had different places to live. And she had different work she was trying to do to support herself. And a car that was going to break down. And there were a lot of different things that she would deal with. But she kept she kept going she did not look back she did not say let me go home let me go how many times did she ask to come home never never so she was determined she was going to do this and i think of sarah faithfully by abraham's side and she's just moving forward lindsay would look to the brothers in the congregation to take that lead but but a person of faith that's what they do if you look at others noah we're just talking about noah last week and his wife had to be an active part in all that was going on. She had to be a support. Well, in many ways, Lindsay had that kind of personality in, in lending her to, su to support the work that was being done. And she never, I could not get her to say any time that there was anything difficult about her work assignments in uh, Warwick or Tuxedo or even the warehouse. Never, not a negative word out of her mouth, ever. Because she said, no, it's going good. Oh, I'm learning. I'm probably making more mistakes, but I'm learning. And she just kept going. And that's the way she was. So we think about all of these different ones that uh, even are cited for us. Uh, and we, we see people of faith. But we see behind so many of these men who are identified are, are, are women. They had to be there, right by their husbands, right by those who were uh, being used by Jehovah in mighty ways. Well, it came from support. 
And it's true, uh, you think about even in the first century, Lydia, a generous person who uh, obviously was uh, made a big effect upon other people. We think about Priscilla being someone who's hospitable. Lindsay was. And she was thinking of others. So those are all good things. We even think about those who are included in the life and uh, ministry of Jesus, and Martha and Mary, a powerful part in uh, being part of that Bible record of the things that they did for him uh, to support. So those are things that give us positive views of sisters in the truth. And of course, when you think about how do you think Jehovah felt about these ones? Well, of course, what was their view? Hebrews 11 and verse 13 says this. In faith, all of these died, although they did not receive the fulfillment of the promises. But they saw them from a distance and welcomed them and publicly declared that they were strangers and temporary residents in the land. So in a sense, Lindsay saw those promises as well. And she died before she received them. But it didn't change what she did. She wouldn't have changed what she chose to do in her life. She wanted to do that. She was happy in her service. Um, and that came from, from being raised that way, to not being afraid, to work hard, and to uh, serve Jehovah whole soul. But it's also that she even knew there was a chance that she would not be able to succeed in surviving the cancer. And she would tell us that. But she would never tell us that as if it was uh, uh, a defeat. She just said, right, we're not going to think about it right now. We're going to work hard to be able to beat this. And that way she was able to stay busy. And she enjoyed her life in that way too. So it's good for us to know about Lindsay in this way. Uh, let me read to you another piece of this, this letter from Lindsay's mom. She said to Lindsay, uh, Your love for Jehovah and his Bible truths has never wavered. When you were a teenager, I remember you putting up post-it notes with scriptures of them, of qualities you wanted to work on. That was amazing to me. I'm so proud of you and your determination to continue to worship and serve the one and only true God, Jehovah. I'm in awe of your loyalty, endurance, and love in all aspects of your life. So I think that can be a sentiment many of us express towards uh, Lindsay, what we knew of her personally and how we experienced some of these uh, very dear qualities ourselves. So think about those things and then think, how do you think Jehovah feels? How do you think Jehovah feels when someone that he loves, a worshiper of him that he loves, dies? And that's where for you, for the family, but for all of us, we have to remember the things that Jehovah said about death, death of his servants, but also about his own loyalty and faithfulness. Look what it says. Because now we read scriptures, and we can read scriptures about the resurrection over and over again, for instance. But we, we read them in a different way once we've lost someone. And you know that. You've experienced that already. But it does change how you look at the scriptures. Now when it says in Hebrews 6 and verse 10, it says, For God is not unrighteous so as to forget your work and the love you showed for his name, by ministering and continuing to minister to the Holy Ones. It would be unrighteous for God to forget. But he's not going to forget. So he, took, he takes note of what we do. We all take note. We're all talking about it today. And seeing everybody here that knows, uh, that knows all of Lindsay's activity that involved their life uh, is really a, an encouragement. And you should take encouragement from it. But there's still the sorrow. sorrow so it comes down to do you realize that Jehovah would never forget that work that she's done? And that's a beautiful thing to remember. That's why when Job was going through his weakest time, his, his down moment, um, and he prayed that even he could die, that he could just not be alive. And, uh, but he said Jehovah would remember and wake him up. He said he even had a the script. The, uh, it's in Job 14th chapter. He used to say he had a yearning. Um, in Job 14. But this is what it says for now. In verse 15 of Job 14, it says, You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the work of your hands. 
So imagine somebody longing for something. And then imagine that's Jehovah. That's Job accurately described why he was not afraid. Why even though he was going through a terrible situation where it seemed better to die, he's going to be remembered. He was not afraid of that. And that's, that's the assurance you can have. So we're going to take a walk and talk a little bit about the resurrection just in, the, in what we're very familiar with in John the 11th chapter. And just to round things off for ourselves, because this is part of our healing and yours too. When we talk about Jesus and the resurrection of his friend Lazarus, we learn so much that it's good for us to see now in, these, in this light. Now we start seeing what happened, what's our assurance, what about Lindsay? So John the 11th chapter, verse 11, he's talking to, the two, to, his, to his disciples. He says, after he said these things, he added, Lazarus, our friend, has fallen asleep but I am traveling there to awaken him. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will get well. Jesus, had ever, however, had spoken about his death. But they imagined he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus has died. So Jesus acknowledged that death, it was death. A sleep-like state, it's true. But she's sleeping. Lindsay gets to sleep. Verse 17 says, when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to consult them concerning their brother. Verse 23 says, Jesus said to her, speaking of Martha, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who exercises faith in me, even though he dies, will come to life. And everyone who is living and exercising faith in me will never die at all. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. So she had, Lindsay had that confidence as well. And the difficult conversations that she would have to have in thinking about it even, and to say uh, that I might not win the battle. And I remember her saying that and thinking, okay, let's not think about that. But she was just, she was just noting it. She didn't want us to think that she didn't know this could happen. But she had tremendous faith that that was not the end, that that was simply rest. So it is when she was in bed in the hospital, and I remember her saying to us all, but I think because she had spoken to some of us before about that, I think when she smiled that smile, as only Lindsay could do, she could put that smile that would just disarm anyone. And she said, I'm okay. It's simple. It's a lot, it's not complicated. And she knew it was okay. She said, I'm okay. I'm not, this is not stressful. Now, she also knew we were all struggling at that point. And so for to me, it was just her saying, I'm confident, this is okay. Now she was more worried about how we're doing and trying to make sure everybody that walked in the room was okay as well. So she kept giving that smile that she would do. And of course, we did. Now, of course, the scripture says that Jesus, he did the ultimate thing. When Mary arrived in verse 32, where Jesus was and caught sight of him, she fell at his feet. At his feet. When Jesus saw her weeping, it says in verse 33, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he groaned within himself and became troubled. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And then it says, Jesus gave way to tears. Why? Jesus is going to resurrect him. But Jesus knows the pain. The pain that doesn't go away just because we say it's going to go away or just because there's going to be a resurrection. We understand. So it's okay. And everybody has their own reaction in, as each one of us have had, to whether we got the news or we were there, um, as you were. But uh, you supported her as she would have wanted to be supported. You know, it's, I think everybody who has gone through someone who has died will, will attest that uh, today is part of that road to recovery. 
It doesn't feel like it today, necessarily. But what will happen, and it does happen, as you know, and the terrible memories of the pain, perhaps even some of the suffering, they do begin to be replaced with the happy things. And there's a lot of happy moments on that video uh, before of uh, the times that you shared together as a family and friends with, uh, with Lindsay. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. She brought a lot of joy to a lot of people and there were a funny, lot of funny little things that made Lindsay, uh, Lindsay. So um, sometimes you think, what, what do I write? How do I write to someone who's lost someone like this? What would you say to, uh, to Greg or Christina? And what would you say to those who are closest to her? And write one of those funny stories. Write something that had an impact to you uh, that Lindsay, they'll treasure those. Those are memories they will never forget if you share them with them. And you won't forget either. So uh, that's, that's what she'll do. You, all of us can ache a little bit, but she's waiting. She's sleeping. And she'll wake up, like we said, during the hospital tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow to her. She'll have to find out how long she was sleeping from those of us who will be there. But she will get to experience the fulfillment of her faith through the greatest gift her Heavenly Father can give her, and that's the resurrection. She gets to experience something that many of us, we hope never to experience, the resurrection. But unlike Lazarus, who died after he had been resurrected, um, Lindsay can be resurrected once. And she can be on here on earth and finish work that she started. Maybe not the same kind of preaching work. But she can train others because she is as, and was a woman of faith. So her voice will be added to so many more again. We look forward to hearing that. But of course, as only Lindsay could do, she wanted to leave a message for you all. So, so she has uh, done that. So I'm just going to warn you, if you don't have a Kleenex, you better get one. Um, she made a short video, it's a few minutes, and uh, where she wants to give a message to those who are here today, and uh, to all of you who've been such a support to her. So why don't we give our attention to that? I hope you don't think this is creepy. <laughs> I did, when it occurred to me to do it, that did cross my mind. That was the first thing. Hello, everybody. I hope you don't think this is creepy. <laughs> I did, when it occurred to me to do it, that did cross my mind. That was the first thing. I was wondering if it might be worth it. But you know, it seems to me like at memorials the weirdest thing is that the person isn't there and obviously that's not natural but what about technology it allows a lot of cool things to happen and I just realized that uh, as you might know about me the need to communicate uh, will never go away. So, I thought there might just be a few more things to say before uh, seeing all of you in the new system. And really, um, the real thing that I really want to say is um, Yeah, I didn't get as far as I thought I would before I got emotional, but um, how amazing it is to me that Jehovah can take something that is that is is a severe hardship for anyone, a severe trial, and that Jehovah's power 
is so great that he can turn it into something good. And of course that's something that I believed, but it's never something that I had experienced on such a level. And when I uh, am referring to something good, I mean everyone that has shown a degree of love and friendship that I could never have imagined. I just can't believe that Jehovah's organization offers us friends, so many friends, such close friends, uh, that's besides a relationship with him, that's all we could ever want, right? Real friends who care to a level that we feel that we can tell them anything. And that's been the greatest gift that you all and that Jehovah has given the expressions of his love that come through you and realizing that I don't just have friends uh, but I have close dear friends in large amounts and you show such beautiful qualities and you've taught me so much about generosity and thoughtfulness and including people in your prayers in great detail and uh, uh, I've just been so humbled by it and I hope that you realize that Jehovah sees these beautiful qualities and loves them even more than I do which you wouldn't think would be possible so please keep up your fine and beautiful work. Thank you for the loyalty that you've shown me. And uh, I can't wait to spend time with you in our new system porches after we've received all our many assignments that we'll have in the new system, which I really will really look forward to. And I can't wait to hear everything that I've missed. And I just want you to know that as difficult as it was, there was so much more joy in it than you would have expected because, because of you all. And I can't wait for you to catch me up on everything that happened and um, soon it will have been momentary and light and of course it's already over so everything Jehovah says is true and I'm friends with all of you because of him so what a great God we have and what a good reminder and thank you all for being a part of that and for watching this weird video <laughs> But if you know me, you probably know why I needed to do it. So, love you. Endure to the end, and I will see you soon. Wants to live forever. And she will. She will be resurrected. We have that assurance from Jehovah for those who are faithful. And those expressions she gave give evidence of that. And she would want us to remember, just like she said, be faithful. She wants us to move ahead, as she would want to be doing right now. And her witnessing to everyone she could, because she knew in the end it was for a witness. One night we stood in front of a building in front of Towers, and, and I remember her saying that she felt bad about being sick. And I thought that was an unusual statement. She, she said she wondered, she says, so many are doing so much to try to help her conquer this thing. And she said, I don't know. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way. If I'm supposed to be the one that everybody helps and, and I'm supposed to make it. And then she thought about it for a minute. And she says, I just want to do all I can to make Jehovah's name known. Then she thought about it some more. And we stood there, talked just a little bit more. She said, you know what? I want to be faithful. I may be like many others who are faithful examples in their death, not just in their life. And she said, 
I'm okay with that too. So I think she got her wish. And I think for us that are here today, that's an example that we can uh, cherish in her as well. So we do appreciate uh, you being here tonight, today rather, and uh, to experience some of this. Please take a moment when you can to uh, make sure you meet all the family. We've got family coming here from Maryland as well, Michigan. Um, so others that it would just be good for us to make sure that uh, they know of our concern and love for Lindsay and for them as well, uh, except certainly by extension. And many of us know much many of the family. So uh, thank you very much for for that. We're going to uh, have a song uh, in conclusion. We promised it would not be a song that will just destroy us further, <laughs> but uh, one that would express sentiments we felt that uh, Lindsay would have had. So if you have your electronic device and you can follow along. And for Lindsay, she always shamed us because she had so many of the songs memorized. Uh, we got the new songs and invited her over and we were singing them and by the weekend's time it was done, she'd already memorized several of them. But we're going to sing together song number 27, Take Sides with Jehovah and then say a prayer. So I invite you to stand if you're able and we can sing that together. Take Sides with Jehovah, song 27. Yeah.